All right, Mavs, welcome back to poetry. We are going to spend another fun day doing acrostic poems. So I hope you found um, some joy in doing that yesterday. And I'm going to teach you how to publish them. So one of the things that second graders usually love to do is really start to get comfortable and have a little bit of fun in Google Slides. So that's what we're going to spend our time together doing today. And <clears throat> let's get started. All right, go ahead and pull your bow and arrow back on two, one, two. I can use metaphors in an acrostic poem. Woo! So, Mavs, we're going to spend some time um, today and tomorrow really learning about metaphors and similes because metaphors and similes both are beautiful ways or amazing, fantastic, awesome, fun, glorious ways to make your writing right, to make your writing really descriptive and bring your writing to life. So we're going to spend a little bit of time doing that. Um, today, specifically, I'd like to talk about metaphors um, in our time together, even though I know the video talks a little bit about both. They're very similar, and so we'll have a chance to kind of talk about that, more about the similarities and differences tomorrow. Um, let's get started. Can I read it? Hey, it's about Dot's cat. Otto has black fur and sharp teeth. He moves quietly so he can catch stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's fine. Dear Tim and Moby, can you give me some ways to make my poetry better? From Alec. Whether you're writing poetry or prose, poetic devices like similes and metaphors are good ways to improve your writing and make it more interesting. Moby's poem could use a little help from similes and metaphors. A simile is a comparison that uses the words like or as to make a connection between two ideas. Otto has black fur and sharp teeth. Let's work in some similes to make this line more interesting. How about um, Otto's fur is as black as, uh, as black as the night? And his teeth are like toothpicks. How about daggers? Otto's fur is black as the night, and his teeth are like daggers. We're comparing the color of his fur to the color of night, and we don't even need to say that his teeth are sharp, because the image of a dagger does that for us. A metaphor compares two different ideas without using the words like or as. Let's see what we can do about that second line using a metaphor. He moves quietly so he can catch stuff. That's kind of dull. Let's see. How about when he stalks his prey, he is a shadow? Well, metaphors don't always make logical sense. The cat isn't literally a shadow, but comparing him to a shadow is a great way to describe the way he hunts. So, Otto's fur is as black as the night, and his teeth are like daggers. Those two comparisons are similes, because we're saying that one thing is a lot like another thing. When he stalks his prey, he is a shadow. That's a metaphor, because we're saying that one thing is another thing. That's a whole lot better. The language is more poetic, conjuring up vivid images in the mind of the reader. Hey, where is Otto anyway? Oh, it looks like he got you. All right, Mavs. So the purpose for our time together today is just to become comfortable with metaphors. So in order to do that, we're going to um, go through a few of them. And then I'm going to show you how we might add or implement um, metaphors into our own poetry. So just like we learned, metaphors are a figure of speech in which things are compared by stating that one thing is another, right? My bike is my tool. My water bottle is my provider of life, <laughs> whatever you want to say, OK? Uh, here are some examples of some metaphors. The clouds are cotton balls. So you might, instead of saying something like, the clouds look like fluffy cotton balls, when you're seeing and using a metaphor, you are thinking about what they're like, but you are saying that they are those things. The small boat was a ping pong ball bouncing against the waves. And you see how instead of saying, the boat drifted in the ocean, 
this idea when you add the small boat with a ping pong ball bouncing against the waves really helps to bring that boat's movement to life. The dog's hair is a thick mop. Okay, so you can picture this big, thick, moppy hair on your dog, on your shaggy dog. His smile is the sunshine that brightens my day. So, Mass, here's your job today. I want you to try to think of a shorter word, okay? Because I just want you specifically practicing metaphors in your writing. So, I've opened up my blue writing book from yesterday, okay? And I have my list of adjectives from my old, um, from my previous lesson, right? And I have my um, previous acrostic poem. You can choose to start a new page. Remember, we don't want to skip a bunch of words. We're just going to head over to that very next word that we have here. Okay. And today, as I'm creating or trying to plan and think about what do I want to write about today, I want to make sure that I'm writing about something that I am familiar with um, and that I can add a lot of description to. Okay. So for me, I might choose to write an acrostic poem about my dog, Evie. Her real name is Everett. But like I said, I want us to focus less on the length of the words, unless you're really wanting to spend a lot of time with this, and more just on the practice and idea of creating metaphors for your writing. So I'm going to write E. And for this, I might actually um, skip two lines, um, just because I know that with metaphors, my sentences can get a little bit longer. E, B. I. And for you, if you're thinking, sometimes good words to do would be a pet, um, a season, a holiday. Um, so if you think of the season of fall, a type of flower, anything that you can really think about and use all of your senses for, maybe a place that you are familiar with. Okay. So E. Okay. So if I'm going to think, remember, I want to do the same thing, but now I'm going to write a phrase that uses a metaphor. So one of the things, um, and if I want to go over here to my planning sheet like we did yesterday, you can think of words or adjectives that describe Evie. So I'm going to think about, well, Evie is an eating machine. She's bounding around the house, right? She's super friendly. Pretty much would go and live with anybody if they pet her. Um, she is shaggy. I could really relate to that sentence that I wrote, right, where my dog's hair is a mop. Um, she's adorable. She's curly. Right, so these are those adjectives that are just going to help me as I start to think um, if you're having troubles writing, right? Part of the... Um, writing process is always that plan. So if you feel like spending a few minutes on that plan, on the short word that you're choosing, um, would be beneficial for you, I highly recommend that. So uh, for my nouns, she is a puppy. She's a golden doodle. Okay. Now, if I'm thinking of things that she acts like, she thinks she's a human. <laughs> right? She thinks she's a lap dog. She thinks, let's see, what are some other nouns? Um, I could say a vacuum. So some of these words that I'm using to describe her in the nouns are also going to be helpful to me when I come over here to write my um, word. So again, when you're thinking of your acrostic poem for today, try to think of a word that's like two or, th or I'm sorry, three or four or five letters. So you're not spending a ton of time. And not every single letter has to be in a, a meta use a metaphor. That would be the challenge. So try as much as you can. Um, but just see what you can do to like create that. So let's see, in joys, food, 
is a food vacuum. Notice I'm saying she is a food vacuum. She doesn't actually vacuum. She doesn't, <laughs> but the way that she eats is like a food vacuum. So if I'm using metaphors, I could say she enjoys food. Enjoys food is a food vacuum. Okay. Now if I come here. Um, the, the is a tricky one, huh? So if I'm thinking about it, I might say something like, if I wanted to talk about her curly hair, um, I want to say like she resembles a teddy bear. And so, but I can't say that she looks, okay? And I have to think of maybe down here is a giant teddy bear. Of course, she's not a giant teddy bear, but for my purposes, I can say that she is. Okay. Um, and like I said, not everyone has to be a metaphor. So I, for this one, maybe I just choose very good at making new friends. And I could add on, I could say she's a friend machine, right? Maybe <laughs> she is a friend machine. Okay. Again, th this is the fun part about acrostic poetry is that there's no limit. There's no explicit rules with it. So you can really kind of make this just something fun for you. Okay. Um, and then E, every day is the best day ever. And the reason I'm writing that is it just reminds me of how much her tail's always wagging. She's just super duper happy all the time. Okay. So you can see I have three metaphors. Enjoys food is a food vacuum. She is a friend machine. She is a giant teddy bear. And then down here, I just kind of said every day is the best day ever. So you're going to have a chance to write your acrostic poem and your job and your um is going to be to try to make a, um, try to include metaphors. So here's what I'm going to do. I promised you this. If you are not feeling like you are ready or you have a desire right now to know how to publish and create these online, then I want to just let you have that choice. And just remember that in this lesson um, that I taught you how to do that. So if you ever want to come back to it, you can come back. If you do want to see how to use Google Slides, and find some fun ways to create some things, then just hang tight and stay with me. So goodbye to those who are all done and are ready to go write a poem and take a picture of it for Seesaw. And hello to those who want to stay on and learn how to publish on Google Slides. All right, so here is what we would a lot of times do in a new, um, in a normal situation in class, okay? So what we might do is we would go to you can find this actually, and I just, I shouldn't have done the bookmark. So you can go to here, um, your little waffle, and you can slide down, you can go to slides, and you'll get to the same place that I was right here, okay? Now, this down here might show you things that you've opened and all of that, and that's fine. But what we wanna do today is we wanna find a blank. So you're just gonna click on the blank slide, okay? I always usually um, kinda get rid of this stuff here. Just gonna close it. I like to delete it and kind of create my own. Okay, but you can just do whatever you want. Over here you have themes that just give you this sense of like a background if you want. Um, although I'm gonna show you how to do something even cooler. So let's pretend, so if I'm thinking right now, I'm gonna choose a background. So I'm gonna go to background and I'm gonna choose, let's pretend I can choose a color 
or I can choose an image. And so if I'm thinking about my dog, Epi, I might look for my search, um, a Google image search here. And I might do something like a soft, gentle rainbow. And then see what kind of pictures come up. Because I don't want something super dark because I feel like it would be hard to see my writing. But I want something kind of pretty and friendly. So this thing, like this picture right here, kind of resonates with me. So I'm going to choose it. Really, you can choose any of these backgrounds. Or, I mean, if you would choose something else. Um, you can choose that too. Like if, if you have a different search term, this one's kind of cool. Um, but when I think of Eddie, I'm going to go with this. So since I'm doing my dog, that's my background. Now what's cool is that this isn't going to leave. It's, I'm not going to lose this. And so now, um, since I'm doing my um, picture about Eddie, I'm going to choose a picture. And I just think it's fun. I know there's a lot of different things you can do, but I'm going to do insert. And I'm going to go down here to image and I'm going to go here and I'm just going to go search the web. And so I, if you remember, I said my Evie is a golden doodle. So I'm going to look for something for a picture of any golden doodle since um, for you guys, you probably don't have access to one real quick. Right. So we're just going to find image. Search the web um, golden doodle. Oh my gosh, aren't they so cute? And she's kind of a light haired one. She kind of looks like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. Aren't they so cute? So she kind of looks like this. And I kind of like this one because it's not an exact photo. So it looks kind of perfect for our purposes today. So I'm just going to have that because it kind of brings my writing to life and it just makes it a little prettier. So. Next, I'm going to add a text box. Now, my text box is going to be, I'm going to show you how to do this because you're going to do, for this font, let's go ahead and do, like, call it 50. Yeah. And for this first box, I'm going to kind of pull it over. You can see there are these little squares here, and you can slide it over here. And you're just going to type a letter. So since mine is, and all of these need to be capitals, okay? So E. And it's pretty big. Um, and we're just going to keep all the colors black unless you know how to change it um, today, just for time spent for you guys. Okay, down here we'll go E. And then I, oh, sorry. Um, so right here I'm going to change this letter to V. Now the way that I did this is I right clicked um, and then hit copy. Okay, or you can do control C. So you can do control C or you can click on it and hit this. Edit, copy, edit, paste. So now I can pull the second one down here. I. And with this team, don't really worry too much. Like, don't get stressed out about it. Um, the thing with Google Slides is no matter what you can do, you can always undo it, which is my favorite part about it. Um, and, like, you can go back and save. So I'll kind of show you a couple of those things without trying to overwhelm you. Um, so EVI, and then I'll show you how I do this again. Edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay. I'm going to pull this guy down. You can move these around with your mouse, or you can use your uh, down arrow key. It's really up to you. Cool. So now I have that. Now I'm going to add this one. seems a little awesome. I'm move it. Now I'm going to add a text box for here. Now. This text box is going to be different. I'm going to kind of move it up. You can move your text boxes around. My other one was 40, but I'm going to make this one 25. Okay. Now here is where I'm just going to click in it, and I'm going to type my sentences. So for her, I had said, and maybe I will change. The A here is where you change the color. So I might do a purple for Evie. Okay. And now I'm going to type in the sentence that I wrote earlier. Enjoys food is a food vacuum. Okay. And kind of capitalize the end for me. And it'll try to do that because it's like, wait, you need to. Um, okay. So I can click on here. I can go control C, control V and make a copy. 
or I can go back up to the edit. So right here, I'm just going to delete. And then I'm going to say very, nope, yep. Very good at making new friends. She is a friend machine. I want to put that in the back, um, capital letters. So again, control C, control V, um, or I can click on it and hit edit. Copy, edit, paste, and then move it down with your arrow keys or whatever it is that you want to do. Go here. Is a giant teddy bear. So it seems like it's kind of high. There you go. And then edit, copy. And then control V to paste. So there's a lot of different ways and shortcuts that you'll, lose, that you'll learn to do. And really, it's just practice. So again, just have fun with it. You might spend a good amount of today <laughs> playing on Google Sites, and that's okay because um, we've also made time for that in our life. And so it's kind of a good tool to use because you'll definitely be on Google Sites a lot in third grade. So, And then my last sentence was, every day is the best day day best day ever. So I'll go E-V-E-R-Y every day. And if you push delete right away, it'll uncapitalize it. Every day is the best day do caps here, ever. Okay. So, so super fun. So now you can see if I have my um, acrostic poem. So that's what you got to see that some of the kiddos had done um, in previous years. Up here, you can see it acrostic poem about heavy and if you want to share it you can share it you can share it with your parents email if you want um definitely if you took the time to do this share this with me so you can go tiffany dot hampton at pbsd.org and you can share it with me now like i said um you can just do that and then you send it to me and then I'll see that you've done this cool acrostic poem on Google Sites. Now, here's one thing, too. So hopefully you've just kind of watched this video and you're not trying to do everything at one time. But then you can kind of go back. So um, I highly recommend and encourage you. You can kind of go through and listen piece by piece and just have some fun. Um, the most important thing before we go is I want to show you. Let's pretend I'm, I'm like, I messed up or something deleted, right? The cool thing with... Um, Google Slides is you can go like this. These little arrows say undo. So watch this. Let's pretend I was doing something and I deleted. Oh, my stuff is all gone. What do I do? Right? Don't worry. That's what you do. You don't worry because here's what I can do. I can undo that. It's all back. And everything that I deleted down here is back. Okay, so... You can just go back and do things anytime. So don't ever like worry. So just have fun with it. Whatever you get done on it is fine. Um, I'm more interested today that you have an acrostic poem written down and added um, that uses metaphors. And if you went kind of above and beyond and want to try some new things, and for sure share whatever it is that you did. Maybe you just got a background today. That is okay. So, that's you did awesome. Thanks for hanging with me. And um, I'm excited to see your great thinking. All right, see you tomorrow.